Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel! In today's video we will finally add flamingos to the Elm Hill City Zoo, the animal that I wanted to add here from the very beginning. Initially I had some other plans for the flamingos, but when the wetlands pack came out and we uh, started building this wetlands section in our zoo, some of you actually suggested that the flamingos would be the perfect addition to the wetland section and I totally agreed, that's why I decided to add them here. Besides that we have now like this little bird section in our park as well, so we have the peafowls, we have the red crowned crane and now we are adding the flamingos like opposite to those two aviaries that we've built some time ago here on the channel. This is also my last Planet Zoo video uh, that will be released on my channel before the new pack, the conservation pack comes out. So from now on we'll build something totally different in this zoo. We will finally start building in some other places and sections of this zoo so this is quite exciting for me. Lately I've been building those wetlands habitats so much. I mean all those habitats had uh, like a main focus on the water sections of course because all of those animals that we added recently love water so they need to have their water sections. So for me building something totally different now sounds very <laughs> exciting and I cannot wait to build a habitat for example for an amur leopard or a scimitar horn or uh, yeah, I cannot wait uh, for some changes. I already know where I will put those animals, I have plants, I have found perfect spots for them, so I am very, very excited for them. Don't get me wrong, I still love the habitat that we are building today. Uh, I think it came out really, really well, something that I wanted to achieve. Uh, this habitat unfortunately suffers from something that I call uh, the shadow curse, because the positioning of this habitat is really bad when it comes to the light in Planet Zoo because the sun in this game is like shining only from one direction. So when you have to build a habitat like I have to do it today like against the sun, it is sort of cursed to have like this bad light, a lot of shadows in there, uh, but we cannot really do anything about it. This was the perfect spot for this habitat. Uh, still I tried to do, for example, the cinematic shots in the way that it won't be too like affected by this bad lighting but still if it was the other way around I mean if it was positioned like on the other side where the uh, where the crane cranes are it would look so so much better Anyway, this habitat is inspired, again, like two last ones, uh, by my visit to the Berlin Zoo. Uh, I mean, this isn't a recreation by any sort, I just uh, sort of took the things that I liked from the uh, flamingo habitat in this zoo. I mean, the main part that inspired me so much was the shelter and also uh, the fact that the fence of the flamingo habitat that was like uh, kept in a distance from the path and there was a lot of plants planted bef uh, between the fence and the path so it looked a bit natural and the uh, fence like really blended well with the foliage so you couldn't like really like you could see the fence but it was so well like blended with the foliage that it looks so so natural and this is what inspired me so much and I wanted to do something like this today. Also the water section is a bit inspired by a turtle back zoo in New Jersey. This is something that I found on the internet and I really liked uh, the way the plants were planted like uh, around the water section and this is what I took from the zoo and applied here with slightly different, more temperate foliage. As you guys can see on the screen, I already did the fencing for this habitat and also I uh, am working now on the water section that I just told you about. So uh, firstly, I lined the whole uh, like uh, water section with those faux rocks. Of course, this water section is artificial, so it was made uh, when this habitat was built. Uh, it isn't an 
natural ponds like we did last time. So I lined the whole pool with the fake rocks and this time we really need to think that they are fake. Uh, and also I added a lot of those mulch pieces around. Uh, I skipped some of, you know, adjusting them and so on, not to make this video too long. Uh, but this is basically uh, the ground where we will put all of our, our foliage to make this look more interesting, like very lush, very like natural, even though this is a fake body of water. Uh, I also like uh, deleted some of those fake rocks and I decided to change them into this like uh, rock wall that we created from those small little rocks and I am using it a lot lately because I love it so much. Uh, I firstly used it in the crane habitat. No, the first time that I actually used it, it was in the, uh, a reptile house in the other zoo, the Desert Adventure Park. And I loved it so much that I used it first in the uh, here in the crane uh, aviary, then I used it in the otter habitat and in the uh, capybara and tapir habitat, then also again in the water buffalo uh, habitat. And now we are also using it now. Maybe I will give it a break in the future, but I love this wall so much that I really wanted to use it in here. And in the end, I am really, really happy that I did because I think that it brings like this really cool uh, vibe to this water section. As you guys can see right now, I am adding a lot of foliage around this water section. There will be a lot of different grasses, some bushes, also some trees, uh, because I wanted to make it very like dense and uh, like to create those like windows between uh, the different kinds of uh, bushes and trees for the guests to look in this habitat, not to make it like so visible from every corner. Like uh, this is what I saw in Berlin. That uh, uh, the foliage created like those natural like viewing galleries and this is what I wanted to achieve in here. Also I will add a lot of those uh, ponytail palm trees. Uh, I always love to sing them in the ground and I think that they look really cool that way as uh, some type of those more uh, like higher grasses that you sometimes see uh, like next to the water section so uh, I really love it. Also I will do add uh, some aquatic plants later on. I will add duckweed. I love to use the leaves from the Euro pack as the duckweed and I will also add some elephant grass and also some reeds as well. While I am adding all those plants to the house Habitats. I would like to talk with you guys a bit about uh, my channel and how fast it is growing lately. Thank you guys so much for all the support, for all the new people who are joining. This is again really, really mind blowing to me that I have almost 8,000 subscribers, at least while I am recording this voiceover, we are like really close to 8,000. So thank you guys for that. This is really amazing to me. I never thought actually that I will see those numbers here on the channel when I first started. So thank you guys. And the comments lately are so amazing. Like don't get me wrong, they always been amazing, but the amount of comments, comments is so, so amazing. You guys really seem to love my videos so thank you for that uh, i got so many like wonderful amazing comments lately and those things really keep me going like i also post uh, for example my habitats on the planet zoo community page on facebook and there are also so many nice people there they love my design so thank you guys there was one comment that really sticks to me and it said something that uh, not only are my builds beautiful and detailed, but they also display a deep understanding of how Zoo works. And yeah, this really means so much to me because I really do my research. I like read about Zeus. I, I look at different habitats online, not only on how they look visually, but how they work. Uh, what is required to build a habitat and stuff like that, uh, what is required for different animals. Uh, so yeah, if 
So yeah, if you guys see it and if it my builds show that, this means that my work is not wasted and it means so, so much to me. For So thank you guys for all the comments like that because they really keep me going. And if you, by the way, are not subscribed still to my channel, what are you waiting for? <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, just please consider to do so. Uh, thanks to that, you won't miss any of my future uploads and also you would help my channel to grow even more. So again, huge, huge thank you to all the people who joined lately and to all the people who leave comments under my videos. Thank you guys, I really, really appreciate that. Let's also talk a bit again about the new DLC because since the last video we had so many new reveals on social media of Planet Zoo. Uh, I'm not doing those uh, videos about every uh, like uh, animal reveal, every animal photo that we get because I simply don't have time for it. But I know that many of my fellow Planet Zoo counter creators do those videos. So if you would like to uh, hear their thoughts about the new animals and other screenshots, uh, definitely go and watch those videos. Anyway, I am recording this voiceover uh, right now, just after the Amur Leopard was revealed by Planet Zoo. Uh, so I've seen all the animals uh, by now, uh, because we still didn't get like an official, official screenshot for the Siamang, but we could see it in the first trailer for the DLC, and also uh, we got some screenshot on the thing on Steam of it, so I basically saw all the animals already, and I must say that based on those screenshots, shots i am fan of all of them i think that they look amazing especially the pshavalski horse and also the siamang i think that they look so so beautiful the thing with the amur leopard and the scimitar horned oryx i think is that uh the screenshots for them weren't the best so we'll have to wait till the new dlc is released uh, to like fully see them to see them from all the angles and then i will be more willing to share my opinions about them because uh, I don't want to do it solely based on one screenshot. Still those animals look pretty cool but uh, we will see them and then I will share with you how, what I think about them. Anyway, we also got a photo of the backstage props and this screenshot probably makes me the most excited about the whole pack because all those things are amazing. So many like boxes, crates, uh, shovels, forks, stuff like that. I am beyond like excited for them. I cannot wait for them. And yeah, they actually make me want to go through all my backstage areas that I did and, uh, you know, redo them, add those things because they are simply amazing they look so so good and there are so many of them of course we'll have to see them all uh, live uh, while when the, they'll be released but uh, based on the screenshot I already know that there are so so many of them as you guys could see uh, some like minute ago or something I uh, did this thing where I covered the enrichment items this food enrichment item for the flamingos uh, so many people are are still like amazed and surprised that you can do it and yes my answer is yes you can you can cover it with different foliage stones and so on and they still will be able to use it I already did this in my desert adventure park I did it here for the cranes and I still get those comments where people are so surprised that you can do it uh, and yeah this is how I showed you guys how to do it basically and also uh, in the cinematic shots by the end of this video you will see that they are actually using it without no problems. When it comes to the land section for the flamingos, I added some trees for them to give them some shadow. One of them is a tree that I really love, the Tupelo tree. It was added to the game with the update 1.9. It was a free tree but I really love its texture I really love those branches and I uh, always add it right now in my habitats when you sing it to the ground it looks so much more realistic it's not so huge uh, but still looks really really good 
So next to the fences, like those small fences that I used here, uh, I added a lot of bamboo uh, plants. This is what I took from Berlin Zoo. There was a lot of bamboo uh, around and inside of the uh, flamingo habitat and a, a lot of bamboo was growing like next to the fences, like recovering the fence. And this is what I wanted to achieve here as well. I added some dream grass uh, to those uh, bamboo plants to make them look a bit more dense. Inside of the habitat I added a lot of nettles, the plant that I lately rediscovered in the game and I talked a lot about in my last video. Thank you guys by the way for confirming that the nettles in English stink, not burn. It was a bit confusing to me because in my language they burn, so I didn't really know how to call it in English, but some of you uh, helped me with that, so thank you. And of course I added a lot of small rocks inside of this habitat, some enrichment items for the animals and also like a food bowl. Uh, lately I will also add some of those decals as I did for the flamingos and I uh, sort of think of them as bird poo. Uh, so they are white and they are in some places, it looks really cool and realistic. And after that I will start the work on a shelter for the flamingos. My whole idea for this shelter was that as I told you guys many, many times, uh, we are building this zoo somewhere in Europe in temperate biome, so we are de dealing here with uh, changing seasons, so we have winter when there is quite cold. Uh, and those more tropical animals ha need to have a place where they spend their winter. Uh, so I decided it would be cool to uh, give them like a house or a shelter where, where they could spend the winter, but the guests still will be able to see them. So uh, it will be a shelter with a huge window, uh, there will be a pool inside for them to use the water section, uh, a lot of hay and uh, just a place for them to spend winter. And rest in the summer. In my local zoo I know that the flamingos are closed in some building uh, for the winter and that the guests cannot see, like see them in the uh, colder months. And they always do those announcements on their social media uh, when it is like warm enough uh, that the flamingos are back on their uh, regular uh, like display exhibits uh, so the guests can see them again. Uh, but here I wanted the guests to see the flamingo whole year round so uh, this is why they have this window and the guests can come here and uh, see them uh, all the time. The shape of this shelter is inspired by the shelter for the flamingos in Berlin Zoo. In this zoo it still has a lot of windows but it is like further in the distance so we cannot come, come too close to it. But still I really like this idea of this shelter and it reminded me of our wetlands house, I mean the wooden facade. Uh, so uh, that's why I decided the same to use the same materials that we uh, used while building that building. Uh, uh, so I had uh, like the facade already made, I just had to adjust it to the shape of this building, which was actually a lot of work. There are a lot of small uh, wooden pieces, uh, so I skipped a lot of it. I didn't show you, you know, adding this wooden facade to all the sides of the building because it would be simply too long and too boring to look at. But in the end, I really think that it was a nice idea to use the same materials because of it. Uh, this shelter like really, really uh, suits the displays, like really blends together with the architecture around it and looks really, really cool. The shelter was something that actually took me the longest in this habitat. It was quite detailed, it had a lot of different small pieces, uh, so I spent a lot of time building it, but in the end I am really satisfied with how it is looking. Uh, I think that it is one of my favorite shelters in this zoo. It looks really modern, uh, really cool, but still fits this whole uh, area of the zoo, fits the wetland section, so I am very, very happy with it. In this video, I mean in the speed build, I also won't show you adding the foliage around the whole habitat. Uh, it is the same foliage I am using all the time, but in the end, in the cinematic shots, I think that the foliage around makes the whole difference. Thanks to it, this habitat looks so beautiful and so cool. 
and I really love this idea that I already talk talked about, like of those uh, viewing points made out of foliage. I mean, there are only some places where you can go uh, to see the animals because the rest of it is covered by, you know, higher uh, trees or bushes and stuff like that. And I think it looks really, really cool and something that I would like love to use more in the future because I think that it gives more privacy to the animals and also I think that it looks just so so beautiful and it is also something that I saw in a lot of zoos so uh, something re realistic to do. As you guys could see, I struggled a bit with adding the water section to this house. Uh, I had some uh, problems with the um, like height of the water section because it was always not how I wanted it to be. I cut out a lot of struggle, but uh, finally I decided to add it using the uh, glass barriers. So I added the water and I lowered them down and I was able to achieve the thing that I wanted to achieve. But yeah, it was a lot of struggle because at first I didn't want to add it using this technique I just wanted to you know dig out the ditch at the water and uh, then add the uh, concrete pieces at this floor uh, but then I thought that maybe I would try with the barriers and it worked <laughs> and it is looking so so good in the end also in the shelter I will add some ivy pieces that I didn't show you in the video uh, but it was something that you know I was uh, just recording my cinematic shots after I finished this entire habitat and it sort of like seemed a bit empty to me I mean the inside of the shelter so I decided to add some greenery to it and I think it was the right decision because thanks to this it looks so much more interesting while I was building this shelter my game actually crashed uh, I don't get that a lot I know that it crashes sometimes for some people but I am a very lucky person when it comes to it because it for me it doesn't crash at all so when it did I was a bit uh, surprised but also scared that something really bad happened and I will lose Elm Hill City Zoo or something but nothing like that happened it didn't crash for me and uh, like after that it was just one case I don't know what happened really uh, but I lost some of the progress of making the shelter so I had to redo it and uh, for example I had to redo all the beddings all the uh, decal pieces that I will add so if you will see them you know positioned slightly different by in the cinematic shots this is because I had to redo it all and it was hard for me to you know put those things in the exact same places that I did uh, that's why they might be a bit moved or in totally different places. The whole building will be a bit like elevated above the entire habitat so I had to find a way uh, for the flamingos to go in there so I created this like wooden footbridge I think it is called in English uh, for them to go up there. Uh, you will see me adding like those really small uh, wooden beams. Unfortunately I had to like uh, make them a bit like lower or almost barely visible because the flamingos couldn't walk over there but now it is working and it is looking quite cool when they are using it so you will see it also in the cinematic shots by the end of this video. I think that the flamingos, if I am not wrong, are the first animal that I am building a habitat for for the, fir for the second time uh, because I already added them to the desert adventure park. That habitat however was totally different so it was still fun to build for them in the Elm Hill City Zoo. I already shared some fun facts with you guys about the flamingos in that video but maybe I will repeat some of those uh, here if you haven't watched it. Flamingo nest is made of mud. A flamingo nest looks like a mini mud volcano with room for one large egg. Flamingos are monogamous and mom and dad are team players who both take care of building the nest and then they both incubate the egg. Flamingos get their pink color from their food. 
Many plants produce natural red, yellow or orange pigments called carotenoids. Those pigments are found in the microscopic algae that brine shrimp eats. Uh, as a flamingo dines on algae and brine shrimps, its body metabolizes the pigments, turning its feathers pink. The greater flamingo is the largest of all six flamingo species. They are also the most widespread of all the species they can be found in parts of Africa, Southern Asia, coastal regions of Pakistan, India, uh, the Middle East uh, and Southern Europe. Their typical lifespan in captivity uh, is over 60 years. In the wild, they, the average lifespan is 30 to 40 years, which is quite surprising to me that they can live so long. And the greater flamingo is considered less concern, so uh, finally an animal that is not endangered that we are adding to our zoo because more on, and more of those are unfortunately endangered or uh, they face the extinction. Okay guys, this is all that I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope uh, you liked this uh, flamingo enclosure. I know that many of you cannot imagine your uh, zoos without flamingos, uh, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up down below. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video and of course comment down below if you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys! Thank you.